So this is Renewaville, a sprawling American town. People here want to move away from fossil fuels, but people here like their big houses and their personal vehicles. So we built this model town to show what it would look like if we really tried to switch to 100% clean energy as fast as possible, but using technology that already exists. So can we do it? The first step, electrify everything or almost everything. There are big benefits to this. For one, electric cars or heat pumps are generally much more efficient than their fossil fuel powered counterparts. And no gas guzzling cars driving around means cleaner air and quieter streets. So residents replace their furnaces, cars, ovens, and more with electric versions. As a result, the town no longer has direct emissions from transportation and buildings. But all that extra electricity Renewaville now needs has to come from somewhere. The fossil fuel powered grid. Now, for this simulation, we did have to simplify things a tad. In reality, grids are huge and a community's exact energy mix is generally determined by large utilities. Decisions aren't made by a single town but the concepts still apply. So now that all the town's vehicles and appliances are using electricity, the grid has to get bigger. So I'm gonna add some extra electricity lines back here. With all these improvements in place, we've cut our emissions by a fifth back to Renewaville's grid. It's currently powered by a mix of natural gas, coal, nuclear energy, and renewables, roughly the same breakdown as the US itself. To cut emissions further, the town will need to shift away from natural gas and coal and toward renewable energy. Solar and wind are relatively cheap. Let's try pumping renewables up to 30%. Now we can retire coal completely. Not bad. Emissions are reduced, but the grid can't take any more wind and solar. These types of renewables aren't consistently generating power exactly when people want to run their electrical appliances. Grid operators have to make sure power supply at any given moment meets the power demand. This is how much energy Renewaville has to produce throughout the day. You can see it peaks in the morning, then rises again in the evening. And not including solar, this is the remaining amount of power that Renewaville needs to generate. The peaks and valleys get even higher, forcing grid operators to shift down and then up different forms of energy. Wind power could maybe take up the slack here, but what if there's no wind? To make up the difference, Renewaville has to turn to natural gas power. That doesn't work for our zero emissions goal. One solution is that Renewaville could invest in a form of energy storage, like these massive utility scale batteries. That way, excess renewable energy can be saved up for times when demand exceeds supply. And let's say the town installs smart meters, incentivizing power use when energy is most abundant. And you can see, batteries and policy have smoothed out supply issues, allowing for even more renewable energy. Okay, so now we're almost there, we're 10% away. Final 10% of the town's emissions is coming from natural gas. From here, residents could decide to build another nuclear power plant, but that would take a couple decades. And the town, uh, unfortunately, isn't situated for hydropower or geothermal. So they opt for an imperfect solution, hydrogen. Hydrogen can be created through excess renewable energy, and once produced, it can be used to power the town whenever, unlike batteries, which are usually meant to be used within the day. Now, hydrogen's not especially efficient. Creating, compressing, and storing hydrogen requires roughly twice the amount of energy than just sending the solar power straight to power a light bulb. Still, by electrifying everything, scaling up renewable energy, shifting the load with 
batteries and policy um, and getting that last 10 percent, Renewable is now 100 percent powered by clean energy. But this highlights a broader point. It's really hard to stop using fossil fuels. The good news is we seem to have all the technology to make that happen. We just need the people and the policies to move forward.